for the, you know, just for the basic flight talk stuff, we thought it'd be cool to ask you some of the aerospace physiology yeah. questions because people always ask us and we're like, well, blood bad, brain good. <laughs> uh, That's yeah. you got it. There you, there you uh, go. You don't need so, me. <laughs> so from, from the medical side, what happens when we're out there pulling G's? Yeah, I mean, very similar to what you just said, you know. <laughs> I mean, we can get more technical about it, you know. So, I mean, the, the G forces, it's a, it's a, when you say a G, what does that mean? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing nine Gs, so that's a that's a multiplier, that's a magnitude of the the one G that we're experiencing right now. So we're all sitting at one G, I think, um, depending on where you guys are. But I don't think anybody's on the on the ISS. So we're we're Gunky's all sitting here. Yeah, that's right. I didn't notice, I didn't know as Gonkey's the, the only one out of the three of us not celebrate Mustache March. I'm sorry to have to say that. No, I don't. No, I, <laughs> I don't do mustaches anymore, man. <laughs> and those of us that are in the the guard reserve side, we got yeah. a little bit of extra the going beard, on too. The full beard March, anyway. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I mean, so um, yes, yeah, so when you're doing nine Gs, you're actually nine times the force of gravity that we're experiencing here. So um, obviously, we our bodies did not evolve; they weren't designed to uh, to do well in that environment. So that's why we have to do certain things to try to remain conscious. Um, kind of just the basics of the way G-forces work, you have, at least the way we understand it in the medical world, is the G-forces act on our body in three different axes. So you have the um, the X-axis, which really is going right into the chest. That's the one astronauts have to deal with, you know, because they're in a seated position going directly up, and all those G-forces are, are transmitted directly into their chest mm -hmm. from the front to the back. Then there's the Y-axis, kind of more like your yaw axis, which doesn't really – maybe plays a role more in, like um, – you, know, you think of uh, race car drivers when they go tight turn, they kind of get pushed against the door. And the one that you guys need to worry about in the fighter pilot world is on the Z axis, right down the spine. And that's the most important one, though, because you know all of our blood vessels actually kind of move in that direction from the cranium down to the uh, um, to the toes. And so when those G forces increase, that blood is actually getting heavier, and it's really challenging to keep it up to the cranium so you may remain conscious. And that's where the G suit comes in and the anti G straining maneuver. Yeah. So, do, so do astronauts have to worry about blacking out? Dumb question. <laughs> um, they do, but the uh, G tolerance is much higher in that direction in the x-axis. If okay. you think about it, because it's displacing most of the blood. I mean, the heart does start to struggle a little bit when all the blood is pooling in the yeah. back of the of the uh, the heart, right? But and you know, the back side of the brain um, gets engorged as well. So you, uh, actually, the visual cortex, the part of the brain that does vision and balance are in the back part. And so that engorgement can cause some issues with those senses. But generally, your G tolerance is much stronger in that direction mm -hmm. versus um, in that Z axis. Okay. No yeah. All right, go ahead, dude. Uh, so I guess, you know, G, G suits, right? G suits uh, inflate. I'm old school. I flew with the old G suit that was not that great. Have you yeah, flown with the ATAGs? A -tags? Yeah, what yeah, is I've flown with both. Yeah, what does the A tags do that? Let like, because when I first started, we had the PBG, the pressure breathing under G, which was mm -hmm. the helmet that would inflate and give you force. Which we can talk about that, right? Your lungs. That's the other part of this about breathing under G. It's it's very hard to breathe under G once you let out that air. Yeah, there's kind of the two components. So there's the keeping the brain uh, perfuse. We call that the cerebral perfusion, and then there's the breathing component. Yeah, because that pressure on the lungs, especially if you get behind it and you don't start off with full lungs, it's going to be really hard to inhale. And, and, you know, the lungs, if you look at, if you ever look at lungs, like when we, when we do our anatomy class, the lungs are just such fine little fibers, you know, in film the, between those little air sacs, tiny little balloons, just, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them. And if it's already compressed and tight because of the, the gravity, you're not going to be able to open them up. That's why you kind of learn right before the G's come on, you take that deep breath and then you close the, uh, the glottis, you know, where you, just close it so it doesn't all escape and you do those very sharp exhale inhales and yeah. part of what you're doing is you're taking a breath and oxygenating but the other part is you're releasing that that a tremendous amount of pressure on your chest long enough to let that actually heart beat because the heart has so much pressure on it that release of pressure lets it actually get a beat in and allow that um the perfusion to continue and then the um, other thing that the g-suit's doing that you mentioned is it's squeezing the lower part of the body which is less important you know, your legs and your lower abdomen and trying to displace the rest of that um, uh, blood away from those areas and into the more important areas, which is your chest and your, and your cranium. And then the, the, that's why you're also, you know, contracting those muscles, squeezing the butt cheeks, squeezing the, the, those big quads, calves, 
and just trying to keep the blood out of those areas and keep it into the uh, the brain so you don't go don't go don't go uh, cold there. Yeah, and for the record, I made fun of the Rafal guy because he made a G strain that sounded like. Eh. And I'm telling you right now, no great, dude. pilot. Great. I'm just wondering. Look, when you do the air exchange, there should be no moaning. There should be. It should just be a right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, not only not only does it make you sound silly, but it's it's not an effective G, G strain. You. Not an effective <laughs> anti G strain. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gonky. You had a question. Sorry. I, I, is there I, is there any truth to different body types being more resistant to to G forces, like we always used to be, like uh, so and so is five feet tall, yeah. smokes like a yeah, like a yeah, train. Lady. He can take twenty Gs. You know, is there any truth to any of that? Yeah, there's definitely truth to that. I mean, that's why when they do your centrifuge, they first kind of test your G tolerance. Like they, they specifically tell you don't don't G strain. Let's just see where you're at. And there's a there's a wide range. And when someone starts to gray out, black out, and G lock from one person to another, and you know height is part of it because the the length of that blood vessel from your heart to your your brain is one variable. <clears throat> Some people may start off with a little bit elevated blood pressure, which I mean, bad in terms of long term, in terms of like heart disease and stroke risk, but that can actually be a little bit protective for the G lock. Um, <laughs> and so there's a variety of things That's that actually true. go into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. It's interesting. What is the, what's the ATAGS do? Why is that so much better? Or is it that much better? I never flew with it. So, no, it is. And it's been a while since I've looked at the actual published data. I want to say, if I recall, and I have to, I have to look, the, look this up afterwards to see if I'm not saying anything inaccurate, but I think it gives you maybe one G more of protection than like the, the older kind of legacy suits. And part of it is that they have a full circumferential bladder around the, um, around the legs whereas, versus like the legacy suits had little compartments. Mm -hmm. And so there'd be little areas that weren't applying pressure. And then I think the other big thing is that I think it, it the way it, um, it coordinates with the um, the accelerometer and the actual avionics of the um, the um, aircraft being able to deliver a, a more accurate um, increase in in contraction versus like the amount of G's that you're experiencing. So I think I think it was those two things. They cover a larger surface area of the abdomen too, if I recall. So there were several different things that ATAGs did that improved it. And I, th I want to say it got you like maybe one G more of um, protection, but it's been a while since I um, was reading about that. I mean, you say that, but you know, if your resting tolerance is four and you're, you know, you get another couple G's just from a, a normal G suit and you get one mm -hmm. more, I mean, now all of a sudden, you know, you're oh, a big difference in Kong. Yeah. Yeah. Big one difference. G's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, you combine the, the improvement with the ATADs and then also the, um, the, um, the collision, the, the ground collision, um, warning systems. Mm -hmm. Was that, what's the, um, the I remember, I was at, yeah. yeah, the auto, auto GCAT. GCAT. I remember when that yeah. was getting incorporated as well. So those two things yeah. combined have saved so many pilots. It's been what, really What does tremendous. Buckley have? Are they block thirties? Um, you know, I just switched to the unit and I should know that. I oh, want to okay. say Sorry. they're actually block you know. 25s, but they, um, Oh, they do have, record. yeah, I think so. Okay. I just joined. Um, the, I just joined the Colorado Guard from the Utah Guard just a couple months ago, so I'm actually going to in process this uh, this week. Way too early for yeah. questions like that. Then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to kill me if I mess that one up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, going back to the physiology, because we've talked about a mishap with well, Thunderbirds uh, with the push pull, and oh, I, yeah. I did a I did an interview with uh, Saab mm -hmm. folks, the the grip and demo, where he does a lot of negative G positive G. And I was watching this going, Holy crap, you know, cause I could yeah. as a pilot. How does that affect your G tolerance? Can you talk about like physiologically what happens there? Yeah. The push pull can be really, uh, really challenging for our physiology just to deal with, um, kind of what you're saying, like you're going from negative G's positive G's back to negative G's back to positive G's. And so the body is, you know, trying to deal with these fluid shifts and, you know, as, you know, what your body tries to do is as soon as blood starts to uh, come out of the brain, it doesn't want you to lose consciousness. So it tries to increase your heart rate. It tries to increase the contractility of the heart, give you a better squeeze. All your blood vessels try to constrict and tighten up, you know, but as soon as you do the negative Gs, the opposite happens, right? And so if you have the opposite um, thing happening in your body and all of a sudden your body's trying to deal with, you know, blood actually flowing and congesting the brain and trying to stop that. And now all the blood vessels are opened up. And then you go all of a sudden turn like positive G's back on and you've lost that um, kind of compensatory mechanism. So you can't compensate. And all of a sudden um, your G tolerance is just tanked. And we see a lot of mishaps right in that scenario. And I know you guys are trained to that, right? To be careful in those I'm scenarios. I'm aware of it. It's aware of it. 
it, yeah. it's it, yeah g g's are the most i lost a friend in the b course in f16 school because he locked yeah. um and dude that's that's it's a what? scare it's a scary thing in these fighters go ahead what is it? so uh when i was uh a young type going through the you know the horn rack the older guys used to be like uh you got to build up your g tolerance like you're drinking you know like your alcohol tolerance so like <laughs> you know, when I flew a lot of BFM in, like, I like the great G's fighter didn't... pilot analogy there. I love that. <laughs> That's how I was taught. You got to... I get it. I get it. It's like uh, caveman style, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, when I was flying a lot of BFM, man, I G's were not a problem. But, you know, when I would take a break from it, go do, you know, I don't know, blazer bombs, something that didn't require a lot of G's and come back to it, it was always much more difficult. Like, it was never really taught to me. Like, does, does anything inside the body happen? Like, if you, if you're conditioning wise, uh, as, mm -hmm. as maybe as some sort of auto reflex to G forces, like, uh, building a tolerance, is that, does it, is that a thing? Yeah, I think it almost is a, for certainly a thing. I mean, there's all kinds of like small little like modifications your body's, you know, making any time you're being exposed to stress, right? I mean, that's the whole point of exercise. You know, we're stressing our body in a kind of like very intentional way to get a certain result. And so, I don't know if I don't know if I know the like the evidence behind that enough to like know specifically what's happening, but there's all kinds of different barrel receptors in our body that's turning fluid shifts and yep. you know thinking because about like how we're reacting to our, our stress stressful situations. But yeah, I mean, I noticed. Remember, I, I was flying in F16 probably once a week when I was at Aviano and F16 uh, squadron there, and I remember noticing the exact same thing. And I also remember just how exhausted I would be after these high G sorties. I mean, exhausted in a way I've never experienced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, they used to, I mean, I, and I used to teach students too, you know, we go out and do a G warm and that was kind of like your, your measure for the day. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, Hey, if, you know, if it's tough for you, no harm, no foul, we don't have to, you know, we can come back if you're, and I know some of the, some of the G uh, tolerance issues can be like, if you're dehydrated, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I was just curious. Like I said, they always, they always tell me it was like drinking and I don't drink. So yeah. <laughs> it was a poor analogy. You flew the Hornet. Yeah. Is that yeah. 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 Gentleman's aircraft. Doc, have you ever uh, gotten Jesus? I've never gotten Jesus. No, but I mean, I've definitely seen lots of other people that have. So that's what the capillaries rupturing the small. Yeah. Building. So I mean, yeah. So I mean, you get them like a lot of times in like the back of the arms, because if you think about when you're sitting like this, you know, all that blood pools there or in the back of the, the thighs, all, anywhere that the blood would pool. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they, the, those capillaries are so tiny, they get overwhelmed and they just start to burst. So those are tiny little bruises. That's what they call them. And the medical term is petechia. Petechia. Yeah. yeah so there you go. There's your. <laughs> you hurt your petechia. Yeah. <laughs> I, I petechia myself. <laughs> I'm going to use that yeah. from now on. Yeah. Donkeys <laughs> off the. Off At the least, your guys' vocabulary is going to be much yeah. higher. Have to say. Right. Not with any words you care about, but. <laughs> this no. is. Uh, it's Wrong too bad context. we don't have a squadron to go back to to, to, to yeah. demonstrate what we've learned. <laughs> hey, boys, our Pastikia is really messed up today. Check it out before you oh. get out there. Uh, all right.